Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Ezekiel 27. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And boy, that uh, lot of darkness now in the world. All right, Ezekiel 27 and verse 1. Now remember something. Um, Hiram, the king of Tyre, uh, during the days of Solomon, helped uh, Solomon build, uh, well, get some wood for the temple. You've heard of the Cedars of Lebanon. They were very famous. I don't know if they even have them anymore. Uh, there was a, a pine tree down in Miami. They used to call it Dade Pine. Very, very hard wood. Uh, it was harder than oak, my opinion. I used to do a little bit of woodworking, and I used to do construction work. And I rented an old, old house that had some dade pine in it and uh, had some scrap pieces of wood, and I was trying to make something, nail something. And all the nails were bending. I had to actually drill a hole and put a bolt through it because you couldn't nail a nail through it. It was that hard. Of course, the wood was probably 50 years old back in the back in the 80s. And the stupid people, they cut down all the dade pine trees and used every bit of them and didn't replant them. And it's considered extinct now. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the Cedars of Lebanon. Very famous. I don't even know if they have them anymore. So. Verse 1, Ezekiel 27, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea. What is situate? Situated. They're at the entrance of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles. Well, there's a lot of islands in the Mediterranean. I mean, Greece is a nation of islands for a lot of them, you know. Uh, Crete, Malta, uh, what's uh, Gibraltar. Uh, there's a bunch of islands in the Mediterranean, bunches of them. Uh, Sicily, I mean, come on. Which are the merchant of the people of many isles, thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrest, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. So I guess anywhere a ship can take them, that's their border, right? Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. They have made all thy shipboards of fir trees of Senior, they have taken cedars from Lebanon to make mass for thee. And what's a mast? You know, you it's a, it's where you hang the sail, like a sailboat. That's a mast. Verse six. Of the oaks of Basham have they made thine oars. Well, let me tell you, there's not too many woods that are more sturdy than oak. Oak is one tough wood. The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory brought out of the isles of Chittim. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt. Uh, Egypt grows some uh, very, very high quality cotton, by the way. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy sail. Blue and purple from the isles of Elisha was that which covered thee. Well, guess what? Blue and purple was a dye. It came from a type of sea snail, a seashell. And it was very, very costly and labor intensive to make. And the snails were almost driven into extinction because they were so valuable 
divers would go down and grab them and bring them back and you needed a lot of them to make dye. Uh, purple. Purple was the color of royalty. They were the only ones that could afford this dye, this purple dye. Uh, let's see, what was it called? It was called the Konex. Well, they even called it... Uh, uh, let's see, they called it Tyrian purple, you know, Tyre, Tyrian, or Phoenician red, Phoenician purple, royal purple, imperial purple, or imperial dye. Uh, and uh, Murex, a type of rock snail. So it was very expensive. Only... Uh, only the very, very wealthy people could afford this stuff. And it, the Phoenicians were the ones that uh, made all this stuff. And it made them very wealthy. I mean, you know, uh, your queen would love to wear purple, right? Matter of fact, in England, I think it was England. But uh, it was against the law for anybody other than royalty to wear purple. They could be put to death. So, and it has even been suggested that Phoenicia means the land of purple. It was very difficult to make, very expensive, as I mentioned. And, uh, you know, most dyes, the more times you wash it, uh, it fades. Not this stuff. This stuff would actually look better after it had been out in the sun and washed a few times. It brought out the color. So... Yeah, a type of sea snail. So, um, let's see. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, verse 7. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy sail, blue and purple from the isles of Elisha was that which covered thee. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad were thy mariners. What are mariners? Sailors. Thy wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee were thy pilots. Uh, you know, navigators and captains. You know, navigators were very important. A very, and they didn't tell everybody how to do navigation. Verse 9, the ancients of Gibal and the wise men thereof were in thee, thy caulkers. You know, what do you do with uh, when you got joints and gaps in between the wood? You take caulk to keep the water from seeping in. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were in thee to occupy thy merchandise. They of Persia and of Lud and of Foot were in thine army, thy men of war. They hang the shield and helmet in thee. They set forth thy comeliness. The men of Arvad with thine army were upon thy walls round about, and the Gamadims, Gamadims were in thy towers. They hang their shields upon thy walls round about. They have made thy beauty perfect. Tarshish, uh, by the way, Tarshish is considered a old name for Spain. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches. With silver, iron, tin, and lead, they traded in thy fares. Well, guess what? Uh, the Romans uh, used to mine tin in Tarshish. And from what I understand, also in England. Verse 13. Javan. From what I understand, Javan is an old name for Greece. Javan, Tubal, and Meshech, they were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. They traded the persons of men. What is that? Slaves? They of the house of Togomar traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen 
and mules. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony. Verse 16. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied in thy fairs with emeralds, purple, embroidered work, and fine linen, and coral, and agate. Agate is a semi-precious stone, very pretty. Judah and the land of Israel, they were thy merchants. They traded in thy market wheat of Minith and Panag and honey and oil and balm. Damascus was thy merchant in the multitude of the wares of thy making. For the multitude of all riches in the wine of Helbon and white wool. Dan also and Javon, Dan, the tribe of Dan, one of the twelve tribes, Javan, old name for Greece, I'm pretty sure. Dan also and Javan, going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs, bright iron, cassia, I think cassia is a wood, and calamus, I think calamus is a type of flower, were in thy market. All right, calamus can be a plant. Uh, it could be made into a wind instrument like a flute uh, it could be it was like a reed could be used as a pen to write on parchment or papyrus like if you wanted to write the scriptures uh, it also was had a sweet scent to it it was used in ancient times by Judah as a perfume and uh, had a very attractive smell. So there you go. Let's see. Dan also and Javan, going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs, bright iron, cassia, and calamus were in thy markets. D Dan was thy merchant in precious clothes for chariots. Arabia and the princes of Kedar, they occupied with thee in lambs, lambs, and rams, L-A-M-B-S, and rams, R-A-M-S, and goats, in these were they thy merchants. The merchants of Sheba, remember the queen of Sheba? The merchants of Sheba and Ramah, they were thy merchants, they occupied in thy fairs with chief of all spices and with all precious stones and gold. Haran and Kenna and Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Asher and Chilmad were thy merchants. Now Asher was one of the 12 tribes. Verse 24. These were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, embroidered work, and in chests of rich apparel, bound with cords, and made of cedar among thy merchandise. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, and thou wast replenished, and made very glorious in the midst of the seas." Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters. So where was that, the great waters? Was that the Indian Ocean or was that the Atlantic after they left the Mediterranean? The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Thy riches and thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners and thy pilots. Yes, they had pilots on boats. They were navigators. Well, the navigator and the, the guy that handled the wheel, the rudder, he was considered a pilot. Thy caulkers and the occupiers of thy merchandise and all thy men of war that are in thee and in all thy company which is in the midst of thee 
shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. So God's not very happy with these people. All they were worried about was uh, merchandise, not the things of the Lord. The suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of thy pilots, and all that handle the oar, their mariners, and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships. They shall stand upon the land and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee and shall cry bitterly and shall cast up dust upon their heads. They shall wallow themselves in the ashes. You know what all that I just read reminds me of? Revelation 18 and verse 10 the judgment of Babylon, right? Revelation 18, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth, isn't that what Tyre was? And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple. Purple! Didn't we read that? Oh yeah. And silk and scarlet and all tying wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Sounds just like what we just read, huh? Verse 13. And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Yes, they bought the souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. It's come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. And they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And who is this mystery Babylon? Verse 24 tells you. And in her was found the blood of prophets 
and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So if you find out who, who killed the prophets, you know who Mystery Babylon is. Yeah, that was Rome. Uh, when did God send prophets, plural, to Rome? The only prophet that I know that went to Rome was Paul. So, that's the only one. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel. 27 and verse 31. And they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee, and gird them with sackcloth. And they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. Oh, yeah. Sounds just like the same thing, don't they? Yeah. And in their wailing, they shall take up a lamentation for thee and lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When thy wares went forth out of the seas, thou fillest many people. Thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas, in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company, and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall. All the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at thee, and their kings shall be sore afraid. They shall be troubled in their countenance. The merchants among the people shall hiss, hiss at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt be any more. Well, guess what? Tyre is gone. Just like the Lord said, never, never came back. And reminds me of that little bit of revelation that we read, Babylon, the mystery of Babylon. All right, well, this is the end of Ezekiel 27. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.